So this is the April 2022 edition of what have I been writing with lately. This is the video in which I talk about the pens and pencils that I've been using each month. And these aren't reviews or recommendations, just the pencils and pens that have been on my desk that I've been using, usually with no real design, just kind of it's how I feel, what's available, what I'm trying to cover on the channel, what have you. So let's jump right into it. Uh, I will say that it's been a kind of boring couple weeks for me as far as pen selection goes. I uh, was looking through the back of one of my drawers and I realized I had opened up a bunch of platinum fountain pens at some point and I had never finished them. Uh, and the really nice things about thing about opening these is platinum does a very good job of sealing the cap. So you can start a cartridge on a platinum fountain pen, forget about the pen for a couple of weeks and it'll write really nicely even a couple months later with some of their really high-end pens like the 3776, it seals so nicely that you might revisit the pen in eight or nine months and it'll still write. The cartridge won't be dried out. But uh, while it's extremely true on the high-end pens like the 3776, it's also true on the more affordable pens. So that would include this uh, called the Prefount. Uh, this one is, it's called like the shooting star, or the little star or something, but it's basically the same thing as a preppy. So I had these three were open. Uh, and then this one, I happens to be a platinum that I'm using, but this one we'll talk about in a second, which this one is a little bit different. So these four, I guess, technically were open. I would have been, and I found them in the back of the drawer. I'm like, oh man, I've been meaning to work my way through these. So I've slowly been working my way through the four cartridges in these. And uh, you could see, you know, for this one, I'm, I'm uh, more than halfway there. Uh, the other ones, not quite so much, which I've recently refilled some of them. But uh, these have been a primary focus of mine recently, I would say for the past couple of weeks. And I've been sort of switching between these four and kind of appreciating the differences of each of them. So like this little star or shooting star, whatever it's called, I believe this one is just a is a fine. I have some nice platinum black ink in it. It's nice and smooth, very consistent. This one is nice. It's all plastic, clear plastic, and it's fully faceted with no clip. So pretty cool pen there. This one is the Prefount. This is a slightly higher end pen. These are about $3 pens, the Preppy. This one's like a $10 pen, uses slightly nicer plastic and it has the metal clip. This one is a... I believe it's a, yeah, but a 0.5. It says 0.5 millimeter there on the nib, which means it is a medium. So the preppy or prefound medium uses the same nib. Uh, that's a nice, broad, wet medium. A lot of fun to use. So this is the 0 0.5 prefound. And this is in a, a blue black ink, which uh, I really like the platinum blue black. This one is the Japanese design edition or something like that. That's why it has the these cool designs. And this is a 0.3 millimeter. And this one also is the, so this is the Preppy. And I think the 0.3 might be the fine or the extra fine. I forget their, their naming. I think 0.5 is a medium, 0.3 might be fine. I forget. So anyway, nice, consistent writer fun to use, looks quite cool. And then this is just the standard preppy crystal. This one is also the 0.3. So these ones are, you know, the ink lasts for a long time with that preppy in the 0.3. You're not really putting out too much ink. This one is also in that nice blue black. Yeah, so I just, I have a real soft spot for my in my heart for the for the uh, Platinum Preppy and the Prefound, which is essentially the same pen. So uh, I'm really happy to use these and I've definitely fallen kind of a rut working my way through these. You can see they all have like, it's a little hard to make it out. They all have like half of a refill or so. So I'm gonna, I'm dedicated to getting through those. This pen I had brought out before, 
This is the, also platinum. This is called the, I think this one's called the balance. Sometimes it's called the cool if it's in a different color like this. This one is empty, but I just wanted to use it for reference. You could also uh, look for it via the model number, which is the uh, PGB-3000A. Uh, there's no price on here. I think it's like a $25 or $30 pen. It's a lot like the Preppy, but it uses a slightly nicer nib, nicer plastic, clearly has a metal clip. The cap is a little bit nicer. And this one I've been using, uh, I just filled it up a few days ago and not to work my way through it, this I'm testing out because I bought some noodlers. This is called the Bay State Blue. And this is a very popular blue ink that I've actually never purchased before. Uh, you know, I've seen it here and there. I might have used it in someone else's pen, but I never owned a bottle of Bay State Blue. And I know it's a lot of people's favorite blue and their favorite noodlers color. So I just bought a bottle. I had recently cleaned out this platinum pen. And so I dropped in there and uh, I've been really enjoying it. It's actually a nice, vibrant blue that flows really nicely. I don't know why I'm saying everything's nice. It's a really... It's a really cool blue. It's got a very bold, bright color. Not quite like a cerulean or one of them, one of those uh, brighter blues, but definitely not a navy. And it's just a really well-behaved, bright blue color that's kind of a lot, I'd say kind of more fun than a day-to-day -day blue black or a dark blue. And I've been enjoying it. And again, it's very, very well-behaved, easy to clean, and it's been a lot of fun. So that's the Platinum I forget if this is the balance or the cool or whatever, but with the base state blue. I think I touched on a couple weeks ago how I've been doing some, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a project, but I'm doing a lot of testing with the Wingsung 3010. That's a 3010. And this is a very affordable Chinese fountain pen. It's a really nice writer, but there's some inconsistency each time I purchase these. So I've been trying to... I bought a bunch of them, you know, but they're, you know, 50 cents each or so. So that's not really that. It's not breaking the bank. The biggest problem with buying them is you have to wait to get them. But uh, I have maybe five or six of these inked and I've been kind of labeling the lots. This is lot one and uh, trying to figure out kind of how consistent this nib is, how consistent the cartridge, uh, not the cartridge, but the, uh, the converter is and then why some of the fine nibs are kind of they feel more scratchy and less and like less wide than the extra fines some of the extra fines are very wet writing uh is it a mislabel it's just inconsistency is it how this pen write is it a some people say it's uh you know the chinese fountain pens are designed to be written more of an upright angle but this is a student pen and student pens are meant to be this and that so there's a lot of theories out there and i've been kind of just uh found myself very interested in this pen i like these a lot and uh so i have a few of them going so this is like purple lot two this is one this is lot zero this is one i bought maybe three years ago uh so uh this one writes very differently than any of the other ones i'm trying to wondering been trying to figure out why I can't reproduce this one. It has a really nice scratchy feel to it that none of the other Wing Sungs I've purchased since then have had this one. And this one I bought as a solo pen, whereas now I've been buying uh, you know eight packs for seven dollars or something like that. So uh, yeah, Wing Sung thirty ten. I've been using a fair bit of them. Uh, other pens I've been using clearly has been a lot of fountain pens, and we'll do just one more. That's this one. This is called a Lamy Studio. It's one of my least favorite Lamy designs, but I was able to purchase recently used with a gold nib. So this is my first Lamy 14K gold nib in an extra fine. And I bought it used, which is generally not a good gamble with a Lamy nib. These tend to get purchased by people that aren't super interested in fountain pens and they they mess up the nib and then they put it on ebay and uh i usually end up buying the busted nib and trying to fix it and just 
what went from me trying to save some money and this whole pan will end up costing less than the new nib wishing i had just bought the new nib because if they're always a little bit off sometimes they're just straight up busted and the person selling them inevitably is like oh i don't know anything about fountain pens i just had it and i thought it was fine and it could just be a source of frustration anyway so this is a lamy studio again not a pen i particularly like i just don't like the the grip it's kind of slippery and then pen's a little heavy one of my least favorite lamis we'll say but it has a decent condition extra fine lamy 14k nib on it which i really like these are just fun nibs with a lot of personality this extra fine is it writes kind of strangely it's almost like it's an oblique uh it kind of has kind of a slant angle to it uh, so i'm not really sure what's going on there i don't think the person before me tweaked it but they might have and clearly it's ef 14k 585 that means 50 58.5 percent gold which is 14k lami and i don't think it's fake it doesn't appear to be ground but again it, it writes kind of strangely so i've been using it and trying to figure out exactly what's up with this nib i have a other i have a different lami 14k that uh i got in a much newer condition also used but in much better condition i like that one a lot more uh, but this extra fine has been interesting anyway so it's the studio been kind of playing with this one on and off uh, i recently bought this pen used this is a parker 75 in the cizale or cizal i forget exactly the uh what the finish is called or how to pronounce the name of the finish but this is a a nice old school skinny parker and a highly collectible pen this one clearly has some miles on it i bought it used i'll do a video about how i acquired this pen in a couple weeks got a, a nice dent there unfortunately but very cool pen i've wanted one of these for a very long time so i bought it recently it's in condition that's definitely not factory condition or museum quality so i'm going to enjoy it and use it and uh, i've been running through this one and I will be probably swapping out this old, old Parker refill for, for something a little bit more exciting. But to have a pen this old and to get the refill in it that still works. I don't think this is an original refill, but it's definitely an older refill. Uh, it seemed seemed like a shame to not use this. So I've been taking advantage of this, this refill for now and really enjoying this pen. My first ever Parker 75 in the uh the ballpoint I've had the fountain pen i did a video on that i don't know maybe a year ago this is a sharpie pen just a capped one i've been trying to kind of learn a little bit more about sharpie pens how to remove sharpie ink and just the difference between the retractable sharpie and this this and that so i've been playing with a bunch of different sharpie pens i'll probably do uh some videos on these in the coming weeks. So uh, if you're interested, please leave a comment below. If you're not interested, also please uh, leave a comment. Let me know I'm wasting my time. But yeah, these ones are just very good day-to-day -day writers. It's like a Sharpie, but skinny. And uh, it's just a fun pen to have around. Not, really not the sort of pen I use day-to-day. -day. So I've been kind of switching things up a little bit and using this. If I ever do use a fine liner or a skinny marker like this, I tend to use the uh, Sakura uh, Pigma Microns or whatever. But uh, the Sharpie pen has been uh, quite good. I used to use these a lot. I used to use a ton of Sharpies just week in and week out, just going through boxes of these things uh, before I kind of had so many, uh, you know, such an interest in pens and so many pens. But uh, yeah, kind of reminds me of back in the day. And then recently I picked up this pen. I haven't used it much. Uh, but I mean, I haven't used it for that long, but I've been using it fairly extensively over the last few days. This is an Oto, Japanese pen brand Oto, and it's called a Saiten Ball. And uh, it's basically a very wide, a 1.5 millimeter roller ball, which is kind of an oddity. Oto has a different 1.5 millimeter roller ball. Uh, I'm blanking on the name. And this one is, I think... I haven't researched it yet. I just randomly saw it and picked it up. But uh, this one is very smooth, smoother than the other Odo 1.5. So I think it's a different ink, but maybe I'm wrong. But 
This is just a nice, wide, fun to use roller ball. I don't know why I bought it in red. Maybe the other colors were sold out or maybe it's not made in other colors. I, I can't quite remember how it ended up uh, <laughs> buying a red pen. It's not like I'm correcting something or anything like that, but it's a very wide, very smooth pen. That's a lot of fun to cross stuff out with. But it definitely can keep up with you and it's just laying down a lot of ink very quickly but it's well behaved and it's not bleeding through the paper it doesn't when you put it down and let it sit it doesn't really kind of bleed out too much so it's quite well behaved and kind of just a fun interesting pen that i hadn't used before that's the oto uh Saiten. not Saiten. that's different the Saiten ball 1.5 millimeter so yeah those are the pens and pencils that I've been using in April 2022. I would throw that wing song in there, although that was kind of, I was really kind of using them more in March. And now I've cooled off a little bit just because I feel like I have some findings from my experimentation. But uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it, kind of what I've been writing with for the past month. Thanks for watching.